Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel Pharma World. Today's topic is how to read and understand compendial monograph example USP. Generally, any compendial monograph is not user friendly. It is a prescriptive guideline. It does not provide an exact best of activity. Let us understand how to read and understand the compendial monograph in this video. This is one example from US Pharmacopoeia. Typical example. In this example, fluconazole monograph is selected. This is CAS registry number. CAS is Chemical Abstract Services, which is in the USA. Wherever it prescribes to calculate the assay on a dried basis, you have to apply the correction for LOD. KF correction also should be done wherever water content by KF is carried out separately in addition to LOD. These tests must be carried out as prescribed in these chapters 197K for infrared and 197U for ultraviolet. Your internal SOP should capture all intricate points of these two chapters. Check whether your SOP includes all this information from the pharmacopoeia. As prescribed in section 7.20 of general notices and requirements for rounding off, this is the acceptance limit within which the sample must be taken for testing. This is important. Do exactly as prescribed 200 mg in 100 ml of acetic acid. In this impurity section, not this point. Depending upon the potential impurities based on the route of synthesis, either A or B must be done. In your SOP, you may have to declare this based on the potential impurities of the process adopted at your site. You must take 20 volumes of acetonitrile and 80 volumes of water separately and mix them and not take 20 volumes of acetonitrile and make it up to 100 volumes with water. These two mixtures are not same. Dilute the standard and sample in required volume in this ratio. There are about 75 stationary phases for HPLC from L1 to L75 and 48 phases for GC from G1 to G48. You may refer to this section in USP for more information. Temperature is measured in Celsius. The retention times should be between 5.39 and 4.41 for peak at 4.9 minutes, 7.2 and 8.8 .8 for peak at 8 minutes, 7.65 and 9.35 for peak at 8.5 minutes, 
and 8.91 and 10.89 minutes for peak at 9.9 minutes. This is the prescription of the word about, which is within 10% of the set value. If the system suitability test does not pass at this stage, you have to investigate the reasons for failure and establish whether any necessary corrections be made and repeat the system suitability testing. If you carefully see the formula for calculation of impurity, the preparation of test solution and standard solutions, they are made at unit concentration that is mg per ml. If the concentrations are not made in unit concentration, you may have to apply dilution factors for solution preparation. For example, take 100 mg of standard and dilute to 100 ml. Dilute 1 ml of this standard solution further into 10 ml, etc. And for sample preparation, take 25 mg of sample and dilute to 50 ml, etc. In such cases, you have to include all necessary dilution factors carefully. Finally, multiply with 100 to obtain the result. In this calculation, since all concentrations are in mg per ml, for standard and sample, dilution factors are not included. This is the sample peak area of impurity in test solution. The area value should be average of replicate injections. This is the average peak area of impurity in the standard solution. This is the concentration of impurity in the standard solution in mg per ml. This is the concentration of fluconazole in the sample solution. Same calculation for any other impurity estimation. Retention time may vary depending upon the column length, flow rate, loading of the stationary phase, column temperature, etc. But relative retention time is constant because it is the ratio with reference to another peak. This is easier way to remember where the peak would appear on the chromatogram. Read ICH Q3 AR2. You get more elaborate information on these definitions. Specified impurity, unspecified impurity, unidentified impurity, etc. This procedure 2 involves gradient program of three different mobile phases with different concentration ratios at different times. In the isocratic system, there will be only one combination of mobile phase throughout the analytical run. To avoid any evaporation losses, it is definitely required to seal the mobile phase reservoir with suitable plugs during the entire run. In this test method, desacetyl diltiazem hydrochloride is used as reference standard for system suitability. All these parameters 
should be compliant to proceed forward with the testing run. Same calculation pattern as explained in the previous slide. The relative response factor is calculated when there is no isolated standard available readily. The relative response factor is calculated as the response factor in the first step. The response factor is the ratio of peak area of the impurity divided by the concentration in mg per ml. This response factor is further divided by the response factor of API which is calculated in the same way. The relative response factor can also be determined by dividing the slope of replicate injections at various concentrations of the specified impurity by the slope of the reference substance or API. The limit for specified impurity is given as not more than 0.1% individually. Since the specified impurity could be unidentified impurity also, it is limited to not more than 0.1%. If the specified impurity is identified, it could be more than 0.1%. There should be a provision in analytical record sheet to record additional drying time in case the constant weight is not achieved. The recommendation is not specific. It says 5 in 100 weight by volume. You can do this test in any convenient way maintaining the ratio of 5 in 100. USP general chapter prescribes correct way to define color and acromicity. Read this chapter, you will find such a huge prescription for defining the description test. Important points. Freshly prepared means it should be prepared on the day of use. Refer USP solutions and test solutions. This is a prescription in USP. If you want to prepare a solution just before injection, say in your SOP to prepare the solution just before the use or injection into HPLC or GC. About if there was any recommendation that about certain concentration of reagent, it should be within 10% of the set concentration. You can refer USP general notices 8.20. For example, if there is a prescription to prepare the solution of about 10%, it should be between 0.9 and 1.1%, which is within 10% of the prescription. Whenever there is a reference to TS or VS or RS, it is necessary to follow exactly as prescribed in the USP. This is important. TS is test solution, VS is volumetric solution, and RS is reference standard. It is necessary to prepare and use exactly as prescribed in the relevant section of USP. I hope this example will take you through the reading and understanding of the compendial monograph content easily. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Also, please leave a message in comments box for any further support. Thank you.